Okay, we're here at uh, Tent City, which tomorrow is supposed to be their last day here. They're supposed to be leaving at 8 o'clock tomorrow. And I have a couple of people who like to have, uh, like to have a few words to say. Okay, what is your name, Peter? Darlene Finley and Boo Boo. What is your name again? Courtney Jenkins. Okay, can y'all tell me a little, bit, a little bit about what's going on around here? I know they're making this leave. I've been here seven months. And they're making this leave. And it's just, um, I've always believed the land belongs to the people, not the government. And it's just, they had a place for me to stay. They say all these people had a place to hold housing, and they don't. So it's a lie. Here. We started, we, before they started shutting us down, we had 500 people. Then they started shutting it down. And we probably, we probably under 200, I know by now. But everybody doesn't have housing. They tried one apartment for me, and because of my background, I have an assault charge. I did not go to court. I was not convicted of it. I was. I have no felonies, but I can't get an apartment. I just turned 65 Friday. When they caseworker come out here and ask me where is I going, I said I don't know. I thought that was your job. So you've and, never been charged of a crime? Well, I, I was charged, but I was not convicted of it. Convicted of I was not convicted. I do not have any felonies. But because of that on my record, I can't get one apartment. So after one try, they stopped. And they asked me where I'm going. That's their job to be placing us. Like they told the newspaper or the news that everybody had housing. And that was a lie, because we don't. Half of us don't have housing. No, matter of fact, the majority of us don't have housing. People didn't go to housing when they left Tent City. They went somewhere, went to another bridge. There, there's another Tent Cities. There's other Tent Cities. And they, they went got very there. few people. That, that's what there. that is. They got 13 people apartments out of 50 housing. You got 50 housing settings set over there for people to live in, but you only got 13 people over there. 13 people on the list for it, and only 13 of them y'all gonna complete working on. They're not even working on their housing no more. That's, they're not working on it. <laughs> Ain't nobody out here finna get in there. We just wanted us out of here because we're an embarrassment to the city. But we're still human beings. We still have rights. This is going to be worse anyway. It's going to be much worse. They keep, like, I, like I've been telling the other people, they keep driving people from under them bridges. They don't go out there on the street. Then they don't want us out there on the street. That's it. So what do you think will happen if people start getting uh, the homeless going to the streets? We're going to oh, have more crime. In jail. They're going to be, they're be in, in public. Police brutality gonna go up. I'm gonna tell you that, cause the police in Dallas don't care about the homeless folks, and they think cause we homeless they can do what they want to us. I was being beaten, and I called the police. And after they got out here, about two hours later, they said, "You're in Ten City. You have your own laws." And that's from Dallas Police Department. They ain't, they ain't finna. They don't care about us anyway. You know what I'm saying? They don't. They don't think we have no. They don't. They don't think we have no. No, what you, what you, we don't want to. We don't. We don't. We don't beat on. We don't want to be nothing but homeless bums, more or less. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that's not true because we all we got jobs. I have a job. She has a job. He has a job. We got jobs. We have jobs around here. We got cars around here. We got. We actually got bills around. Here. You got folks to pay a phone bill around here. I guarantee you, somebody around here want to do something. I'm saying, but, but people. I'm saying people, people without, without anything. And then how are we supposed to get anything if they keep running us off everywhere? One of the shelters they want to put us in, you got to be in there at 2 o'clock. How can you go look for a job or apartment or anything, try to take care of any business if you have to be there at 2 o'clock? One of the shelters they're trying to put us in, you can't get a job until after you've been there for six months. Yeah. You if you go in there with a job, cigarette. you're going to either quit or you got to pay to be there. $70 a week. And that's... Friday or Thursday, depending on the week. But they, they base your pay off of what you get paid, but it's always between seven, it's called seven dollars a week, four hundred, five hundred dollars a month. If you got a job and you want to go to the shelter, you go to the shelter and you don't have a job, and you enter their program, which is what they offer everybody, is the program. The program is set up because for drug rehabilitation. Everybody out here is on drugs and you can't get no job. You can't work. You can't go outside for thirty days. You stuck inside for thirty days and you can't get no job until you've been there six months. And after you've been there six months, after that you can get a part time job. Then you got four more months to be there. Nate, stop well, working on the housing. housing. I was at that I was at that shelter already. I was in there with some women that had been there 
four years after they finished the program, they were supposed to have housing then. They didn't have housing. They were still sleeping in that shelter four years later. So, and they, and they promised people it would take two months. We'll get your housing in two months. No. Oh, you got people. They got old. Them people don't got old in there. There's women in there that just now, they just now getting their housing. And they got done. They graduated from their program two to three years ago. So, and they, so they lying. They ain't doing nothing. Went around lying to everybody about what's going on. They not. Yesterday on the news, they showed a lot of people, a lot of caseworkers out there, social workers out here, saying that they're helping. So is that true? Not the one I asked this morning. She went. They found me in an apartment, a senior, in a senior community. But because of my background, I could not. They denied me. And then she turned around and asked me where was I going. I said that's. I don't know. I don't know, Dallas. That's your job. And she, she said, "Well, I let you know that they denied you." So where are you from originally? I was born in Detroit, raised in Chicago and St. Louis and Texas. I just came. I six. I spent 19 years in Richmond, Virginia. Do you have any family? I have two boys, but I don't want to interfere with their families. They have. They each have six kids. And that takes money to support six kids and going to college. My granddaughter wants to go to medical school. I don't want to bother them to take care of me. I didn't raise them to take care of me. I raised them to take care of their families. This is what I got right here. Boo -boo. That's all you got right there. And us. And us. We, we love Miss Darling, man. And the gentleman that you just he's, talked to, all them, all them cases cut, he, he's another one that I would not be here today if it wasn't for him and his friends. Yeah. Because he stayed right here. He stayed up all go. night long. He said, watch my channel. He watches the whole camp. This guy, yeah. He's got like the police out there. Well, like, this part yeah. Of this city. You see, because that's, we all, me and him and him, with our stuff, this is, we keep control of this. You know what I'm saying? So we all can, can people come over here stealing our stuff, man. Come over and mess with our people and taking their stuff home and doing all kinds of stuff. So ain't nobody over here helping him out. So we got Uncle Cut, watch Miss Darlene. Because people come down here and do stuff like take Miss Darlene's money. She be sleeping. Miss Darlene, you know what I'm saying? She ain't got nobody, so who she comes to church? You know what I'm saying? So, so this has become my be family and my friends. You be able friends, to watch, you know what I'm saying? And now they're separating and it's all. And I won't know where anybody is. And they won't know where I'm at. I don't know where I'm up here. Man, we don't try but not the city of Dallas has abandoned us. Uh, we don't. We're not treated like civilized citizens. Oh yeah, they don't. Care. They don't care as long as we not. As long as we can't be seen, they fine. Okay. So in other words, so why they doing all this building, building all these townhomes and lofts? So in other words, y'all are eyesore in the community. Yeah. yeah. Because we can't afford to live in your twelve hundred dollar month. Because the lady is building no. farmers market. She's building more condos. She's already got I don't know thousands of them, but it overlooks Ten City, and she don't like that. You can stand outside a good lot of here and look at them condos. That's how close they is to right here. Probably the only thing is you can only see down under Tent City if you look down under Tent City. Like y'all people, people got to be trying to see these folks down. Stuff. This is family out here. We bonded. We all take care of each other. So I'm too old to take care of anything except we Right. Yeah. That's all you can take care of. And I can barely take care of myself. Yes. And it just, we was just doing the best we can. Like but around here, we don't. We got our. We got our stuff, and we got our people. And we stay to ourselves. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like we're going out there trying to do nothing to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Tell me. Uh, you know, the world, people, and some people look at homeless people as nothing, like they're sorry and lazy. And that's not true. Yeah. We got more, we work harder than anybody. It is harder to be homeless than it is to have a house and a job. I, I spent one gentleman tell I can, me. I had one gentleman tell me, sell my papers. He said, you're the hardest working, working one out here. I'm going to give you some money. Do we do it? I, I, I do construction work. <laughs> I do construction work for a living, and I live right there. So lazy ain't what I would call us. I got in. I ended up down here because I came from Ohio with no paperwork, and I can't get my paperwork. Texas is listed under. It's one of the hardest places to get your legal papers in Texas. Period. So everybody who down here, half of them is down here because we don't got no identification. Uh, I don't got no background. I ain't never been to jail. I don't do drugs. I don't, I'm not down here because I'm messed up. 
I'm down here because of circumstance. I got a job. There are I work hard. Here, like myself, that men and maybe women that have made a mistake in their life when they were younger. They went to prison, but they won't let them forget it. They won't let them have housing. They won't let them have jobs, you know, a lot of people. And they paid their dues to society. They made their mistake and they paid for it, but they still can't get no help. They're still getting punished. Yeah, they're still being punished. They made them serve their time. Like my husband, my husband, went, my husband been in jail. My husband, my husband did eight years in prison. You know what I'm saying? He been out of prison for almost, Almost the same amount of time for I want to say seven, seven going on eight years. He been out of jail. Ain't ain't committed a crime. Ain't went to jail. Jail. Ain't had a ticket. Ain't did nothing. This man, man can't get no job. Man can't get a job. Nowhere for real. Man, he ended up got lucky. Got lucky. Got lucky. Got lucky. Got lucky. Del Monte. We got him a job. We got lucky and got that job at Del Monte. The job we got now. We got this job because it's a contractor job. The contractor. So we do demolition on houses, but it's when as needed. So this is why we don't got no steady money flowing like that. It's not coming every day. Our money come when somebody house gets jacked up. Our money come when a storm come through. You know what I'm saying? Sad as it sounds. But that's the only thing we can do. You know what I'm saying? And I say that. Well, he applied everywhere. We sat there and put in 150 applications, and nobody wanted to get a nigga a job. So what are y'all gonna do after tomorrow when the city come out and uh, make everybody move? We be, well, I'm gonna tell you, we being forced to move to an area. We got, we gonna find a home. We don't got nowhere to go. Ten City gonna continue being Ten City. Period. Y'all can shut this one down. There's too many highways in Texas for y'all to shut them all down. We are finna go find a whole nother bridge to be under. Problem is, the bridge is close enough right here. Man, we done made this been, been come to, come too many enemies down here to be able to go wherever we need to go. All this tension that they done created with this mess, we everybody started fighting each other. So now we all trying to spread out so we get away from each other, ain't nowhere to go. But these two places, two places, are you going to our college or are you going to the The tension is building. So from the stress and tension from the city of Mississippi, a lot of problems have been they don't know. Well, what what did you say earlier about the cop going by smiling and waving? Yeah, the cop. We was we, the cops don't even care. Like I said, the cops don't even care. The city they just want to get us out of here. The cops they talking. They happy to see us leave in the morning. You know what I'm saying? I see you in the morning. Thanks a lot, bro. I know you coming to kick me out of my house. You know what I'm saying. But no, they they did this mess, and they now they think they're gonna fix it by making us move. But what y'all gonna do is cause more death everywhere, bro. Yeah. Them people were down there shooting guns. They're not down there hollering at each other. They shooting and stabbing folks outside. Outside these gates, they shooting and stabbing folks we're too. We're safer in here. So y'all wanna come in here and start that? They come in here and created that conflict in here. It's two places. That we go over there. We go. We in a line of fire with guns all day. We go over there, we in a line of fire all day. Why? Because all them people from down there, on the other end, with their attention, their attention with their comp clash with us, on our side, we all going to the same two places, bro. It's going to be death everywhere. And they're not paying that no attention. They talking about what's going on under the bridge. People coming, people got people, police dropping people off under here because they telling this, they telling them this where they safe at. People is telling the police they safe here in Tent City. Why? Because every time somebody leave this mug, they dead. Okay. Y'all trying to kick us out of here for what? What y'all think is it's going to become enough tension to kill each other. They ain't got to worry about us no more. I have what I'm saying? We don't do that. They've been homeless since Jesus Christ. Jesus was homeless. Did they kick him out of here? Because the only thing, the only thing that's going to happen is, I'm hoping, and I'm saying I'm hoping because the smartest thing people ever did in life was fight for what they believe in. And I say that because this land wasn't founded on the laws. The government don't really own none of this. They don't own none of this. The people own this right here. And if the people had enough education to know that, they would have never got up and went nowhere. 